Hey, 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 what's going on? What's going on? Portal Masters, Robert Wagner here from Coinop TV with another Coinop TV live and interactive on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Coinop TV. We got a big show here. We're going to talk about the rarest, the most valuable Skylanders of all time, breaking it down game by game, all five games there. We don't know what's going to be rare yet for the uh, sixth game, uh, Skylanders Imaginators, but uh, helping me out, we got Skylanders X expert matt in the house from skylanders character list how you doing sir i'm doing well rob how are you doing i'm doing well you know i think i may have that uh legend of zelda t-shirt as well <laughs> is that from the nintendo store um that's a good question I, I i don't remember exactly where i got it yeah i picked up a um i picked up one of those when i was at nintendo world What's the store in New York called? World Headquarters or World Nintendo World or something? Something yeah, World, something right? along those lines. I see we got some people in chat. We are live and interactive. Please behave or else we're going to have to give you a timeout. We got Henry, Skytoon, Mebo, Steve, Jaden, Sky, Spyro, Stefan, uh, Mr. Dad Gamer, um, A. Wright, and a bunch of other people. So what we're going to do is we're going to go a game at a time. I think we'll start at the beginning at Skylander Spyro's Adventure. Who remembers? Raise your hand in chat if you remember playing that game. I know a lot of you guys jump on the game sort of new uh, to that. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to show some images of uh, what we think is, uh, what Matt and I sort of compared notes, what we think are like the most rarest, most valuable uh, Skylanders of all time. Sort of like two or three. So we sort of picked two or three from each game. We're skipping the traps. Uh, we do have some vehicles, though, so, you know, for those supercharger people out there, uh, we do have that. And then, uh, Matt, what what are the other rules here? We're going to do, uh, we're sticky, skipping, I guess, prototypes, but we're going to include some of the uh, the employee editions, right? Yeah, that, that felt like the best way to go because even though the employee editions don't come out at retail, they are fairly readily available if you're a collector and you want to get your hands on them. Um, the... Like you said, the prototypes, though, that they're few and far between. That there's the uh, um, introductory figures they had when they were first introducing the game, just to the press and such. Like there's only a couple hundred of them, and they're almost impossible to um, authenticate, I guess. So it, it's it's not really fair to include those, but for those that uh, are trying to get a complete collection. Um, these are the figures that we're going to be looking at. All right, yes, that's good. I actually had, uh, I think it was the prototype or the original Gilgrunt or one of the original ones because I've been a media guy for 12 years plus and uh, Activision sent me a figure in the mail and said like, hey, bring this to, it had a note saying, bring this to the Activision booth at E3. And I think the back was blank, but it had like a sealed, I think it was Gilgrunt or something like that. And, you know, I brought it to the booth. I was excited. I was into Skylanders. But once all the toys started coming out, I was like, oh, well, there's a million of these. And I just kind of gave it away to a friend of mine <laughs> and wish I would have kept it. Probably could have put it on eBay right now, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I haven't actually been able to try it myself because I've never gotten my hands on one. But I've heard from people who do have them that those very first prototypes that came out that that you used at that demo don't actually work in the game they only work with that demo ah yes that's so probably true th that's that's one of the things that makes them so hard to authenticate is if you, if you put it on the portal it just says it doesn't work and so it, it, you don't know if it's just a broken figure or if it's actually one of the originals Yes, yes. We got some more people jumping in. Uh, Trash Boat. I haven't seen you before. Shout out to Ramir. I think Jose might have jumped in as well. Mangled Andre C. Chica Maria says hi. So, and Tyler. All right, we got a bunch of new faces. If you guys are new to the channel, please subscribe. YouTube.com slash CoinFTV. I usually live stream at 12 p.m. Pacific Coast time every day. And of course, there's Matt's uh, YouTube channel on his name as well. So, let's start off with Skylander Spyro's Adventure. Dino Ring. Silver Dino Ring. What do we know about Silver Dino Ring? Do we have a, a price estimate and rarity of this figure, sir? So Silver Dino Ring, uh, he's he's one of the three silver figures, and then there are three gold chase variants as well that um, are quite hard to track down, and once again a little bit harder to authenticate because th the paint jobs on them were so simple. Um, it, it, it's it's something that 
if you look hard enough and and know what to look for, you can figure out which ones are real and which ones are fake. Um, Dino Ring in particular seems to be the hardest one to get right now. Um, going for re- recently, they've sold for about two hundred. Um, the, the cheapest one, if you wanted it right now, that I saw out there was about three hundred. So it, they're getting pretty pricey, and it, it's that's just for one figure. Yes, yes, those silver ones. Um, you mentioned the paint job on there. Those some of those silver ones, uh, like I have the silver Spyro and stuff, and it looks like somebody just took spray paint and just went like, shh, you know, sort of over the uh, the yeah. figures o- there. <laughs> over the years, they, they, they've kind of figured that out that these can be duplicated, replicated easily, and so they they've made an attempt with their uh, desi- the designs of the future chase variants to make them harder to replicate or just give them some kind of special quality or extra features that um, make them harder to duplicate. All right, all right. So there you go. Dino Ring, Earth Element, Skylanders, Spyro's Adventure, some OG. Pretty common on getting the, the regular figure, but if you want to get your hands on Silver One, uh, I guess eBay is the way to go, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's basically unless you know another collector who's getting rid of some of their collection ebay really typically is the only place to go to find these um but maybe you can get lucky somewhere else all right matt let's continue on with metallic cinder here from skylanders spyro's adventure this is a toy fair exclusive from 2012 given out at a show in new york city to press and industry people there so what do we know about metallic cinder uh metallic cinder runs right around the same price point as um the silver dino ring that we talked about earlier uh it's about 200 bucks they, they generally speaking i think the 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 trade fair exclusives um are, are a little bit easier to come by but they're always gonna have have a, a higher price point if you if you want to pick them up if i'm assuming you're not in the industry of course um but it, it's hard to say whether or not it's rarer than a standard chase variant that you could potentially find in stores because we just simply don't have the numbers for these figures. Yeah, I feel like, you know, guessing, I feel like maybe Activision gives, gives out about, you know, 2,000 or so of these, the trade show, and then they probably have boxes left over because they send out some leftovers to, to the hookups and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, this is one of the more uh, pretty-looking ones. I mean, I, I've, I, this is actually one of my photos. Somebody asked in chat, hey, Rob, where's your where's your collection of rare Skylanders? This is actually one of my photos from my collection here, and uh, she really stands out, the purple on the shelf as well so uh you know but here's here's a question matt how do we keep that glue together because some of these old figures these rare old figures man <laughs> the glue is not holding it down what's the trick yeah. on the glue um th- th- there really is no trick the the glue they used in the first couple of years pro- probably even the first three years um it, it just does not last sometimes it doesn't even last through the first initial shipment to stores and th- there's not much you can do about it. I, if, if you want it to look nice again, you, you can just take some, a thin layer of Elmer's glue and a paintbrush and paint it on there and stick it back together. But um, a- a- as for keeping the original stuff together, there's, there's really not much you can do about it. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to call up my buddy uh, Evilos. He does uh, <laughs> he does the custom packaging, and he's able to like glue and seal everything back in place, so it looks like you know it's brand new, perfect, and mint. We'll get some yep. glue tips. He's, he's really good about that. Yes, yes. So let's move on here. We've got we're still in Skyland, Aspire's Adventure. We got Red Camo. What's the story with Red Camo? So I, I'm gonna lump the next two together a little bit. Uh, the Red Camo and the Clear Whirlwind. Um, some people have probably heard this story before, but I, 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 I just like to share it because it is one of the strangest stories I have ever heard of, even in, in five years of Skylanders. It's okay, so these two figures weren't even released during the timeline of the first game, they didn't come out until we were in the middle of Swap Force. And they were still releasing um, Spyro's Adventure over in Europe. And 
somehow they made this crazy deal with LG, the electronics company. Over in Europe, they were selling their smart TVs. And as part of a bundle, if you bought an LG smart TV, they would give you a Skylanders Spyro's Adventure starter pack. But this wasn't the typical starter pack that we usually got. It was it was this big cube of a box that included the game and then three individually packaged figures. And that was your starter pack. So it, they were just random figures. They could be any any three figures that, that I know of um, from the original game. But to spice things up a little bit, they randomly inserted two uh, chase variants into these bundles, which included Red Camo and Clear Whirlwind. So because of the absurd nature of how how you could get a hold of these, they, they were only over in Europe. They were only with this LG promotion. You had to buy a TV until later on some people found how to get their hands on these bundles without buying a TV because they just weren't selling them all. But it, it just it, it was absolutely absurd and when they first came out they were the rarest variants out there um red camo hit prices of two thousand dollars wow your whirlwind was going for a thousand now we, we've gotten our hands on a few more of these figures the market has calmed down a lot and you can get each of them for about a hundred bucks but like you were just talking about with the glue um so many of these did did not hold together and so it, if you want one in packet mint in box you know that you're gonna have a really hard time um uh getting one of those cheap but if you just want the figure then um that then, then about a hundred bucks will do it for you all right. We actually speaking of the glue, we actually have a glue chat, a glue discussion in chat here. Um, <laughs> Sir X Tommy says, and this is sacri- sacrilege. She says you can staple a box and should be no problem. No, 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 no staples. Uh, uh, Family Fun HD says replace it with hot glue gun, and he learned, he learned that from Sky Dad. So tips there. And then Robert Westman said I made my own customs with permanent marker. Is that a thing? Can you use permanent marker underneath? there as as glue is that is that have you tried that at all <laughs> seems strange I, I, i'm assuming they mean customizing the figures by themselves ah yes yes could be all right let's move on okay so wait before we move on so so uh re- recaps so a red red camo we think is uh is now currently you know what what do we think it is about price point uh the red camo is right around 100 bucks 100 and what about the crystal clear whirlwind um, hundred bucks on the high end, but uh, it's, some of those you can even get for under a hundred right now. And uh, these are both just uh, non-in-game variants, right? They're just you know Correct. cool, cool looking for the shelf there. So, okay, anything else we got to say on those two? Do you have e- either one of those in your collection, Matt? I I, I don't. I, I I'm really thinking about picking them up because the prices have dropped, but I, I haven't gotten my hands on them yet. We got Pete Diddy Sports Cards is in chat. Thumbs up to you. All right, let's move on. Here's a tough one here. The Employee Edition uh, Prism Break. For, okay, so now we're in Skylanders Giants. We're moving on from Skylanders Spyro's <laughs> Adventures. I feel like we dwelled in there for a while. But now we're into Skylanders Giants, uh, the Employee Edition Prism Break. This one was great. It was gold. It had kind of like snow uh, on it. It was given to employees of Activision who immediately ran to eBay to sell theirs off to the highest bidder. Uh, I would like to take. A, I'd almost like to go into Activision's headquarters and pull all the employees, you know, from that year, and just be like, "Do you still have your employee edition, you know, Prison Break or something?" Uh, so, yeah. so what's the? Uh, what do you think? What's the call on this? Do we have any idea on the numbers or released or made and the you know the rarity or at all? Uh, w- once again, w- we don't have any numbers on these. Um, the employee editions, a- as you kind of alluded to, they they, they give them to the employees uh, typically around the holiday season. Um, and so a lot of these actually have like a, a, a winter or Christmas Eve theme going on with them too. Like I said, the, in particular this one, the prison break has the snow on his back. And it, th- there's, there's some of the best looking variants especially the best looking chase variants which 
really kind of ticks a lot of people off. But at the same time, it's it's the the employee's reward for working so hard on this game. They're giving him something special. And so it, it does seem kind of odd. I, I guess not everybody that works on Skylanders plays Skylanders, and that's why a bunch of them ended up on eBay. But hey, that's that makes it that much easier for us collectors to get, get our hands on them. So um, th- this figure, we're looking at uh, recent sales have gone for about 100 bucks. But right now, if you wanted to jump on in the next two minutes and buy one, I think the lowest I saw was about 180. So uh, there's a bit of a price gap there. It's one of those things that if you wait long enough, one, a cheaper one might pop up. And it, it depends if you want it in the box or out of the box. Out of the box is always going to be cheaper, but so- somewhere in that 100 to 200 range is about what you're looking at. And I believe this is uh, also a lot of these rare rare ones and uh, are, are non or non in game variants. Uh, if that's the way to say that, is it easier way to say that? <laughs> not they, they don't change inside the game. I'm trying to make it you know clear. Yeah, that, that, that's that's why. We've, even though some of these don't aren't technically, I I know some people hate me for using the term chase variants, um, but it's so much easier to say than non in game variant. So. That's why we stick with Chase, but um, yeah, non in game it, it is the more descriptive term. In chat, we got uh, Stitch and Spyro 101 says, Hi, shout out, please. There you got your shout out. And Dan says, uh, I think it's awesome they reward their employees like this. Yeah, it's a, it's a cool perk. You like, you know, it's Christmas time. You get a cool little collectible figure you can keep or you can throw on eBay. So let's move on to uh, another variant here from Skylanders Giants. Again, we're back to to- uh, Toy Fair, given out in 2003. We got the Metallic Chop Chop. Uh, so again, we're guessing maybe two, 3,000 of these made. Um, what do you know so far? far dan on the uh rarity and the price point uh the average price on this um oddly enough this one's right around that same range i a lot of these used to go for more uh but i think as they're getting older less people are are, are collecting them or more people are trying to sell them it's just supply and demand type of thing but it, it, it's it's Recent sales, once again, have been around 100, but if you wanted to buy it right now, the cheapest I saw was about 200. So it's it's either play that waiting game or pay the higher price. And again, uh, just the chase variants here, nothing different in game uh, as Correct. well. But uh, pretty cool looking figure. I mean, really, uh, this is one of my photos from my collection, and uh, really uh, sh- stands out on the toy shelf with a little a little shimmy shine and luster there. Uh, if you, Dan, you have to let me know if we have any of these, you know, if in your collection. Just you know, let me know as well, so we can com- <laughs> compare what the look, you know, what they look like on the on the toy shelf there. Sure. All right, let's move on to uh, the next figure on the list here. We're, we're still in Skylanders Giants. Raise your hand in chat if you've played some Skylanders Giants. And if you have the Granite Zook uh, in your collection, um, this is uh, another... Uh, so this is kind of like the first time we're seeing on the list like this uh, granite, um, you know, kind of this hard... This like... Um, how would you describe this? I mean, you know, some of these metallic ones are very shiny and silvery and they sort of glow. And then you get to the granite ones and it looks like this was, you know, uh, in uh, the bottom of a, a lava coil, uh, you know, coal or, you know, like a cave or something, right? Yeah, it, this is one of my favorites, actually. And I wish I had it in my collection. But th- this was these appeared in stores very shortly before I really got into Skylanders and started hunting for them. And so I, I, I kind of missed out on these, but I, it's, it's almost, I mean, it, it's kind of grayish. So it, 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 but I think of it almost as like a, a petrified wood type of look to it. Yes, yes, that's what that's a good way of saying it. Petrified wood is a good. I was trying to think of like you know, <laughs> chiseled down like in the dirt and the ground and stuff like that. So thanks for simplifying that to me, Matt. Yeah, yeah. Um, so stone or granite zook in particular i i tend to use the uh, the stone adjective because there is granite crusher who was an in-game variant um in this series as well but um stone zook um he he recent sales once again it it seems people are willing to pay about a hundred bucks for these variants 
And so I don't know if they're just waiting for more people to list them at 100 bucks and snatch them up or if if they're waiting for people to lower their prices or what what the case is, but all the recent sales seem to be right around 100 bucks, but the lowest price one right now is about 300. So they're they're definitely harder to come by, I think. In chat, we got, I guess this is one of the ones a few of the people in chat say they have. Uh, P. Diddy Sports Cars says, uh, Granite Zook is the only one I ever found in the wild, his favorite. Uh, Mag- Magna Charges in chat, what's up? I've played Giants, but I don't have Zook. Um, Patrick says Zook with like three or four explanation points there. So there's some Zook hype out there. Um, okay, let's move on. Everybody excited? Everybody having fun? I'm talking rare Skylanders out there. Here's one that I know P. Diddy Sports Guards wishes he had in his collection already. Fire Kraken, the uh, gold Fire Kraken. He's a, P. Diddy's a big fan of Fire Kraken, as am I. Now we're into Skylanders Swap Force. Moving into the next game. Uh, gold Fire Kraken. What do we know about him, sir? Is this with the rarity and the price on this one? So th- this is... <sighs> It's basically usually considered another employee edition, but it's a little bit stranger than that because it was only given out to the dev team. Ah, yes, I see. There's a sticker on there. Exclusive 2013 dev team edition. How, yeah. How many people are developing? What do we know? How many people are on the development team? We we got <laughs> we got a poll at Activision to find out you know who the development team is here, so we can get exact numbers for our statistics, right, Matt? Yeah, and I I wish I had those numbers, but I I just don't know who to ask or where to go or how to calculate all those numbers because I I don't know how far their their dev team is counted. Um, Matt, you but, Matt, you consider yourself part of the dev team, right? You've helped contribute to the game with your website, the Skyline is character yes, list, of course, right? You should be getting one of these uh, gold fire krakens. That 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 would be nice. Um, <laughs> But unfortunately, no, I, I, I did not get one of these. Uh, but in, in my opinion, it feels like there are less of these because um, I think there actually was another employee edition during Swap Force. I can't recall what it was offhand. Um, but then th- there was this, this dev team edition, which felt like it got what was given to a smaller group. Well, there was um, there was also the, here I'll show it here, the Snolder Dash. That was the... Uh... That was an employee yes, one, yes. yes. So there we're, we go. we're jumping ahead a bit there, but yeah, the Skyline <laughs> Swap Forest Light Core Snolder Dash uh, Employee Edition 2013. So yeah, if you were, uh, if you guys were working for Skyline as Activision dev-, dev Team, man, you got you got the Gold Fire Kraken and you got the uh, the Snolder Dash there. Um, you know, all right, let's get back to Gold Kraken here. So what do we get the value on this? Uh, we guess. That one you're looking at a minimum of two hundred dollars, and I, I I don't know if that plays into it. It is actually that much more rare, or what the case may be, but it 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 does not come cheap. Yes, yes, and it looks cool. I mean, hey, if you're gonna spend a lot of money, you want something that's that's gold, right? I mean, that looks <laughs> looks pretty cool there. Okay, so let's jump over to uh, Skylanders uh, Swap Force. Uh, let's talk more about the. Uh, Light core snolder dash smold snow I can't even say it. The Snolder Dash employee edition. Now, as far as I know, is this the only light core uh sort of rare variants, at least on our list? Uh no, the the employee edition prison break that we talked about. Oh before. yes, Actually. yes, yes. You're you're right. Let me jump over. That's the, actually yes. a light core. That's right. Okay, there we go. So so my mistake. That's why Matt is, is the expert, and uh, I'm just the guy trying to keep the audio from not crackling in there. So, all right. So, uh, any guesses on this? So, we are we thinking, you know, another couple thousand out there in the wild? <laughs> yeah, somewhere along those lines. Yeah, a couple thousand for the employees. Once again, um, what I find really interesting about this figure, though, is that it, it is once again not an in-game variant, um, but it's really strange because. It's the only um, non-in-game variant that I know about that they renamed themselves. Typically, when they give it a, a new name like Snowder Dash, that that means it's going to be an in-game variant. But they kind of broke the rules here, and it, it, it makes it confusing for a lot of people who are trying to collect them. But <laughs> it is not an in-game variant. 
Yeah, cool looking figure. I've seen this up close. It's uh, it's got like this weird snowy crystallizey. I mean, it almost looks like somebody sprinkled glitter over <laughs> glue or something. I don't know. Is there a way to describe that or you know help me out there, Matt? Like you did with uh, Granite Zook there. <laughs> yeah, it I, like I think it's supposed to look like a fresh fallen snow, probably where where it has that like glittery texture to it. But I. It, it, it's it's hard to explain without seeing it in person. If you ever put one of the, if you ever get one of these open, just put it on the top of your tree at Christmas. There, like uh, you know, like it <laughs> looks like could be a little angel or something. Sure. sure. Uh, in chat, Sonic Shadow says, "I have over 190 Skylanders. Love the game. Can't wait for October 16th. That's right. We're doing these videos leading up to Skylanders Imaginators coming out in October. There, we're just kind of filling in with some fun things. Matt and I are doing these regularly once a week. Maybe next week we'll start talking about some uh, more current topics, like you guys been mentioning in chat. But for right now, we're going to talk rare Skylanders. All right. Speaking of rare, we got." Uh, springtime trigger happy the flocked edition and i've got this photo here so to showing the regular springtime trigger happy and then the the flocked one uh again whoever took some of these photos i grabbed these online you know give yourself a credit in the comments shout outs to you <laughs> i don't know who they, where these all came from but uh now this one's probably a little easier to get your hands on right these were actually in stores yeah this this is an interesting case because um it, it, it i i I don't remember if it was officially announced or if it was something that leaked out, but we actually knew where these were going to be ahead of time. Um, the the, fir the first time we saw them, it was in some giveaway in Australia, and we thought they might be exclusive down there, but they were only giving away like 150 of them or something like that. So it, it was really confusing. But then a couple weeks later, we found out that they were going to be at Toys R Us, no surprise there because Toys R Us is a huge supporter of Skylanders. But um, it was, I think, like the week before Easter or maybe even on Easter or something. They they told us when they were going to put them on the shelves. They told us um, that there was only going to be one flocked figure per store. So, yes, they're super rare, but... If you were the first one at the store and you knew about it and knew to look for it, you had a very good chance of finding one. Yeah, I feel like I feel like most people. I'm looking at chat to see if anybody has you know the flocked springtime trigger happy. I feel like this is one of the ones that uh, you know people got their hands on, uh, maybe a little easier. I mean, obviously you had to uh, you know fight your way, you know waiting online. Robert Westmind says I got springtime trigger happy in stores package. I'm assuming maybe he means a flock one there. Uh, so. So what's the uh, what's the value? So this one is this you know cheaper, more expensive? You know what's the what's the flocking? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I said that. What's the flock value? <laughs> um, yeah, that this one is it's still looking right around our our average value of about a hundred bucks here. Yeah, and the tricky thing too, we're looking at the picture here. It's kind of hard to tell which one's flocked and which one's not. If you're like a parent, like if you sent your your mom or dad, like if you're young and you're like, hey, go to a Toys R Us like at 8 a.m. stand out in line, you might not buy the right one because they look, you know, very similar, right? It didn't say on the packaging anything. Correct. Yeah, it, it, it's not an in-game. Well, <laughs> this is a weird one too because uh, Springtime Trigger Happy is an in-game variant already, and so they made a chase variant of an in-game variant. And so it, it's hard to say, but but just putting them on the portal, if you put the flocked one on, it's gonna look like the springtime trigger happy, which is a variant, uh, an in-game variant, uh, but it, it, it is, doesn't change at all from that regular version. Um, but the, the easiest way, you can see it here in the picture that you're showing, um, is to look at the face. In the the non flocked version, there there's like a white or cream color on most of his face, but on the flocked version, that's all flocked and it's all pink. Yes, yeah, we're see we got a good comparison here. That's why I wanted to show the side by side. Yeah, so uh, so that's what you have to tell tell people look for the solid color pink. Yes. 
All right, we're going to move on just a second. Little housekeeping here in chat. Hey, guys, I see what you're saying. No need to keep repeating the same thing over and over again in chat. Lou is hella busy right now finalizing the game for Super. Uh, the uh, Imaginators coming up. And uh, Sky2 Amiibo, I'm not going to stop the stream just to show you my rare collection. I'm showing the rare collection that's uh, you know currently out there on eBay and stuff like that. Some of my rares are in this video, so that's a bonus. So, All right, can we move on there, Matt? Are we done with... With the uh, the flock figures and the I think it's safe to move on, yeah. Employee edition there. I think uh, Mike Nacharge also brought up uh, another employee edition one there. He said earlier, but I lost in chat. All right, let's move on. Now let's get to Skylanders Trap Team. Uh, first of all, the mystery with the dark and the light figures. We got introduced to some new classes when the game launched. We didn't know there was going to be light and dark figures. Well, maybe if you kind of keep tabs on some leaks or some um, you know hush hush information like that. But uh, Activision decided to drop these like after Christmas, which is sort of an odd thing, right? Am I am I up to speed on that, Matt? With the light and dark stuff? Yeah, Trap very team? much so. Um, the, the, the light and dark expansion packs, they came out rather late in the cycle. I, they were essentially might as well have been wave four. And that usually when we start hitting wave four and wave five, if you've been with Skylanders for a long time, you know that these figures are just that much harder to come by because stores are already have so much Skylanders that they're trying to get rid of. They're not ordering a lot more. They don't have the shelf space for them. So even if they do have them, they're not putting them out right away. And it was just kind of a mess. And I, I, I don't know if they really did produce that many fewer sets that made these rare or if it was just the fact that were they they were so late in the cycle that they didn't get the get out there the way they needed to cuz from the beginning during the whole time I I did see them a couple of times I did get mine on the day day 1 when they launched but after that they 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 were really hard to come by so I I don't know what the problem was but they are definitely definitely rare yeah so we're gonna i'm gonna show the pictures here so here is the um skylanders trap team the night uh nightmare and the uh what is it called the midnight museum and the dark trap so these came out in like yeah after christmas uh so technically not variants not rare not special nothing just regular old figures that were in stores for like a quick minute <laughs> and then I'll, I'll, sh I'll show the picture so that's a dark and then we got the light one here with night light and the sand scraper spirey so i'm trying to read off the screen while i got <laughs> chat in the background here i haven't played these much i do like the uh the light trap there that sort of eagle shape that was really cool yep. so so uh let's start with the i got the light one on the screen here uh well are these different in value different in rarity or one one's harder to find than others at all um, the, it, it does seem that the the light pack, I, I think they're about the same rarity, but for whatever reason, the light pack does seem to fetch a higher price on eBay, just slightly, not and not too much of a difference. But you could easily be looking at hundred dollars for just one of these packs, if if you want them new in box. Now these in particular. In, unless you're just a hardcore collector who likes collecting everything in box yet, but if you're going to use these, you're going to open these packs because unlike, it's not just a figure. Like uh, I, I'm sure many of you know, if you have Skylanders, you keep them in box, you put them on the portal, they still still work. Wait, 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 Matt! <laughs> what are you telling me? I don't have to rip open my Skylanders, my $200 rare Skylanders, to use them in the game. What is this you're telling me? <laughs> They're not amiibo. They, they they didn't put any special chip just, in there. I'm kidding. I I know. I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but the thing is, with these, um, in these packs, you have the traps, and so if you wanted to use these traps, which you probably did, because light and dark traps were very hard to come by by themselves, um, you were going to want to open this pack and take out that trap at least so if if you you don't need a new in box they do get significantly cheaper on ebay um i i have seen i think you can get both sets together used um for about a 100 bucks 
which actually isn't too bad, considering that each pack originally retailed for $35, I believe. So paying $50 for each of them after the fact, it, it isn't too much of a markup, but it's still not something I feel that ever should have happened. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's it's kind of crazy. We didn't include, like, the traps, like the cash traps and some of the yawn traps on here. But, you know, this does sort of in, go in with the figures and stuff like that. But, yeah, it's really crazy how some of this stuff in Trap Team really was limited. And the, the downside also is these uh, unlock, like, adventure packs, like, a, you know, an hour or so of, of content, right? Yeah, yeah. They they unlock a whole new level for you to explore there was stuff to collect in there there were soul gems in there to collect it it, it was and each each of these levels then i believe had i I think they just had the one villain um to trap and it 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 was a a, in my opinion a significant amount of content um compared with how much was in the game already so they're very nice packs and being that they were new elements everybody wanted them and i i don't see why they didn't just flood the shelves with these because people would have snatched them up they did actually reprint reprint or repackage just the figures individually but it was like the set with the trap and the adventure pack uh, pieces that were you know those are those are the harder ones so you can you can even even the the individual ones are still kind of hard to find too like the the re, repackaged ones so yeah, and, and the problem with that was that you didn't get the level piece, so you couldn't unlock the, the level. Yeah, yeah, you just had light and dark figures wander around your game that you already <laughs> solved, solved like, you know, two months back or something. So, uh, okay, let's move on. So here is uh, Crystal Clear Tough Luck from Skylander's Trap Team. Um, we got a life life element there. Uh, what do we know about uh, old Tough Luck? Is it... Uh, is this a very rare figure from the Skylanders Trap Team collection? Uh, I personally, I felt that as we got into Trap Team, they had they actually had very few chase variants. Yeah, I think it was mine had just been the three clear uh, figures, Tough Luck being one of them, and so I don't know if they produced more of them since that's the only ones they put out, or if it was since those were the only ones like we only had to hunt for those and so it felt like they were easier to find the some of these i actually did find in stores i do have tough luck in my collection all right we made it to matt's collection do you have do you have a clear uh, uh what was the one with the scissors called there i'm totally uh, shortcut. shortcut yeah do you have crystal clear shortcut I, he's the one i don't have he 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 was the one i wanted the most as well because uh, shortcut quickly became my uh, trap master of choice. Mick Mick and Chad says, Rob, why didn't you include the cash trap? Well, it's a it's a sore subject, you know, like the cash trap and the yawn traps. I just think it's a sore subject. I don't want to upset anybody <laughs> watching. I want to be positive and happy. And I'm a toy figure collector guy, and like spending like a thousand dollars on a little trap thing. Um, you know, I'm a little less excited over that. Matt, are you a are you a yawn trap collector? Is that a thing you're gonna rob a bank so you can fill up your your yawn trap collection? I I refuse to pay those prices. <laughs> um, I I do have one yawn trap. I I, I have the light yawn trap um, from a, a fan of the site down in Australia was able to get his hands on an extra one and sent it up to me but i that that's the only one i have and unless they they drastically drop in price or they i don't know reprint them or something that's not going to happen but um yeah i i I don't see them ending up in my collection we also in chat mike in charge remind us that there's also the clear thunderbolt also so as far as the uh the shortcut tough luck and the uh, thunderbolt those clear is is uh tough luck the uh the one that's the hardest to the rarest, the most expensive out of that grouping, the clear figures from Trap Team? Um, I, I think they're right about all in the same range. Um, they, they run somewhere from about 75 to 100 bucks. Uh, personally, since I only found the Tough Luck, I, it feels to me that Shortcut was harder to find, but uh, overall it's, it's kind of hard to tell. 
All right, so now let's move on to we're staying with Skylanders Trap Team. Let's go over to the minis. They're originally called Sidekicks. They didn't really do much. They followed you around on the games. And then with Trap Team, they revamped them. It was like a very hush-hush thing. I remember being at Comic-Con, and I brought a mini uh, with me in my pocket. And I was like, hey, can I put this on the portal power and see what happens? And security was like, no, 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 and stuff like that. So, <laughs> so for some odd reason, Breeze is uh is one of the hard ones to get now with this uh, two pack here breeze and pet vac now of course pet vac i believe you can get at walmart with uh you know the uh jet vac right they had like a two pack so so the pet vac wasn't too tough to get but what's the story of breeze uh the the biggest issue i think once again was kind of like the the light and dark expansion is it came out so late in the cycle it was one of the last two um, mini two packs to be released. The the other one that was released, I think, was just uh, duplicates of the sidekicks we already had, and, and so a lot of people didn't feel as compelled to pick them up. But Breeze was the new figure. It, it was the, the the new one that everybody wanted. Everybody had to have, and they made it really hard to get because it came out so late. Um, what, what a lot of people don't realize is that back in May of 2015, it was actually very readily available, um, but it was only on Amazon. And I don't ever recall personally ever seeing this two-pack in store, but I did see it on Amazon for a good month and it, it was just sitting there at retail price and i picked up my pack that's that, that's where i got mine i know um and i tried to tell people about it but i think it was just at that time where it, it, like i said it was it was late in the cycle and people weren't at hunting skylanders quite as actively and it just kind of went by the wayside and slowly sold out and now the prices have skyrocketed yeah, yeah, it's pretty crazy because it's like a small figure, not really, you know, variants or anything like that, not really limited, just kind of, you know, short shortage in the stores. And uh, there's proof positive there. Make sure you follow Matt on Twitter and uh, his website and his YouTube so you can stay tuned in on these uh, hot deals, you know, that he's that he's preaching about. So, all right, let's move on to Skylanders Superchargers. Now, for a lot of you guys, I've noticed this. Uh, you know, I've been a Portal Master for six years plus, and I've noticed that every time a new game drops... There's just a whole plethora of new fans, new collectors, new hobbyists that come into the mix, and a lot of them never go back. So for a lot of you guys in chat, maybe you've only played Skyline and Superchargers, and you have no idea, you don't care about any of these old figures, and let's talk about Superchargers now. You've waited long enough, right? <laughs> so uh, let's talk about, first, we got uh, Skyline and Superchargers High Vault. Um, what are we calling these now? Is copper or p paint patina? What uh, What is the phrasing for these here? I... I've kind of coined the, the term patina. Um, it, it just refers to that that greenish copper fading finish. Um, you, you can look it up if you Google patina and just look at the images. You'll see what I mean. Um, don't but, don't don't encourage them to leave our stream, our live stream, to start you know googling <laughs> open a and new stuff. tab. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, the the patina high volt is I think it was the first one that we saw in with, with this finish and I, I i don't remember seeing many of them i never found this one in stores i did eventually find uh one of the counterparts uh the patina eruptor um but that one seemed to be a bit more common that's why it didn't make our list but um patina high volt is sitting right around that hundred dollar mark yet so Yes, yes. And then Dan and Chat confirmed my theory. I started in Superchargers, but have played Trapped. You know, right, so I did go back. Uh, I'm curious, Dan, if you in Chat, if you went back and played all the other games as well. So uh, so do we have any idea on the high volt here? This uh, The rarity, uh, you, you said the price, you said this was about 150 or so. Is that what you said, going price? Yeah, about, about 100, 150, yeah. So there's no way to know like exactly how many of these are made, right? It's, it's all a guess. Yeah, it, it's all strictly guesswork. If you, if you want to try to figure it out, I I don't know what you would base it off of, really, because we we don't even really really know 
how many figures have been shipped. If if you want to say some people estimate they're like one in every hundred cases or something, but I have no idea where they're getting those numbers. So it's it, it's yeah, really pretty impossible to uh, say exactly how rare these are. Now let's move on. My my least favorite thing about Skyline Superchargers was the vehicles. No offense. I mean, it was cool. <laughs> it was cool racing people online. But every time I got in a car and I had to drive around in the game, I got a little less excited about it. So, uh, but we do have some cool looking vehicles. Uh, Shield Striker also had the uh, Pentina, the you know the Copper, whatever you want to call it, limited there. So, did this come out around the same time as uh, High Vault, or was this a little later? It, it, it was shortly after, uh, which I, I, I don't know if it, it, it's just probably just that they shipped separately um, because the, the, the figures, the superchargers figures came out before the vehicles. Um, so they were shipped in separate boxes. And so it just showed up that much later in stores. But uh, for whatever reason, then the the variant vehicles do seem to fetch a slightly higher price tag you're looking at at least 150 for patina shield shield striker that's a that's a tough one doesn't rattle off the uh, tongue as, <laughs> as smooth as uh you know the uh metallic we'll go metallic chop chop or something like that you know the patina yeah. and the copper those those are tough all right we got uh, we got one more uh some people in chat are mentioning thrillipede stuff like that you know thrillipede is a tough one to find but you know i've seen thrillipede out in the wild a few times i'm not quite sure if the ebay prices have skyrocketed quite as high as the uh, burn cycle the patina burn cycle uh here this one's this one's high valued right yeah, um, th- th- there is a little bit of controversy with this one. Um, a number of folks that don't believe it's actually a true variant because we have seen so few of them. Um, from from what I can tell, though, I, I the, the few people oh, I've talked to that own this figure, I do believe it's real. Um well, we got a we got a photo of it. It must be true, right? Because you know nobody online can Photoshop anything or fake anything, yeah. right, Matt? Yeah, uh, but the, it does fetch a much higher price at, at looking at a minimum of about three hundred. Ooh, uh, they 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 really don't show up too often, and when they do, it, it, I mean, there there's always been the question of is it real or not, but. Um, yeah, I, I I personally believe it's real. That's why it's up on my site, um, and that that's all I can really say about it. it it's just a, a rare figure that I, I I think the issue with it was is Burn Cycle came out in two separate waves. They it came out in one of the replenishment waves, and I think that's when they shipped out the variant version of it as well. And so it didn't come in the original wave when we had more of the burn cycles. It just came in the replenishment wave, and that's why there's fewer of them. Once again, just my theory, but it could possibly explain why there's not as many of them. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, we made it through the end of the list. We don't know what's going to be rare or hard to find for Skyland as Imaginators. Uh, if you guys are hyped about that, make sure you get your pre-orders in, get that Chaos figure. Uh, then uh, we, we'll, we'll probably talk maybe next week, maybe some of the pre-order deals to on Amazon and, and Wave 1 kind of stuff, maybe next week or the week after as we get a little closer. want to thank Matt for uh, helping me get through this. We we did. You and I didn't spend any money today. We're not encouraging everybody to go on ebay and start spending money but we want to do an information show uh you know retrospective because uh you know we're both fans of the uh, skylander series and we wanted to sort of you know show off some of these cool figures so make sure you check out matt on uh, youtube.com slash s c l matt and also his website skylanders character list i will put a link to his information in the description below thanks a bunch for watching give yourselves a portal master rank up We'll see you guys in the next video. Adios. See ya.